Well, folks, a new chapter of this year's non-lead to legend starts today in a new country. If you don't know how I ended up at Sevilla, then you should probably go back and watch yesterday's video where everything fell apart at Hamburg after what had been a successful few years. But we've left Germany. We've arrived in Spain. And goodness me, that was a journey. And I'm pretty sure it was the longest journey we've had in the history of non-league to legend. We've just about as far north in Germany as you could possibly get, all the way down to just about as far south in Spain as you could possibly get. We've almost gone Scandinavia to Africa. It's an insanely long journey. And look at all these roadworks on the way. I mean, that was it was it was a miserable time. A miserable time was had by all. 26 hours. We had to come by road because I had a lot of chairs I had to bring with me. You know how it is. We couldn't fly. I mean, it is the option to fly back is there. It's three hours, three hours, 20 minutes. So if I've lost left anything behind phone chargers, that kind of thing. Favorite egg cup. I can always go back. I haven't left any trophies there, have I? That's for sure. Um, I can always fly back in three hours. But yeah. It was uh, it was a long journey, but we have successfully moved into our new house. As ever, I had a look based on my salary to see what I could borrow. I could borrow just over £6 million, which if we convert that into European money, is just under €7 million. Euros. Now, I couldn't find a property in Seville for the €7 million Euro mark. They were like £30, £40 million pound super mansions, and then just your little three to four million euro peasant houses so i've settled for one of those specifically this one a nine bedroom detached villa um in seville and look at i mean look at it It looks like something out of breaking bad it's insane uh, it's i can't believe that you can mess up as badly as i did at hamburg and leave an inner city flat where i was living there and end up living somewhere like this look they're so rich They've got enough seating for, what, seven people in this room? And it's a room without a telly. There's literally nothing for these chairs to point at. If we have a look at, I mean, the kitchen, another another random chair room with no telly. I don't know why they're sitting down in there. If you want to sit down in the dark, you've got chairs in the dark there. Keep going. What else have we got? Looks like a dungeon, in fact. Um, bedroom with with seating so if any if anyone wants to watch you while you're sleeping we've got two perfectly positioned chairs and apparently a camera plus you can have a, someone sat out in a chair on the balcony uh, another bedroom with who i mean i'm not a rich man i don't have a chair in my bedroom if i need to sit down in my bedroom i sit on the bed but in this room you've got a sofa over here if you want to sit over on sit down on this side of the room but if you're on your way out and you want another sit down there's a whole sofa set up and a fireplace over there. It's just not needed. Chair in front of whatever that is. Uh, more chairs outside. Swimming pool. No chairs nearby, which is a bit troubling. But I guess you can just drag one of those out of the bedroom. And then this, this is, I guess this is it's where I grow my lettuce, I guess. Feels a bit isolated. I hope I get broadband over here. Well, so peace and tranquility. There's no mention. Do I get fibre? Hello and welcome to Club 6, part 1 of Non-Lead to Legend. I'm Kevin, coming up on today's episode, we are going to find our way around Sevilla in, in Spain. Apparently we've got a friendly as well, which seems weird when we only had a week's gap between matches, but they've put a nice little friendly in so I can get to know my players. Uh, but I've done nothing other than accept the job. I haven't looked. All my inbox messages are untouched. I don't know what's going on at this club, other than the fact we find ourselves down in 15th place in the league. 16 games played, down in 15th place, only three points outside the relegation zone. And looking at the history of the club, that's a position that we shouldn't really find ourselves in. There have been a couple of ropey seasons, specifically that one. But really, this is a mid-table team that in the past has been a, a Europa League level team, a, a, one of the big six. So it's a team that we should be able to drag up back into something remotely close to the glory times. The only problem is there's less money here than there was at Hamburg and we don't have much in the bank. I've not been given much to spend and we're over our wage budget, so I probably need to trim that down before I can do anything. I imagine the first sensible thing to do, in fact, 
is to convert all of that transfer budget to wage budget and see what we're left with then. Still needing to find an extra 150 grand. I'm not going to worry about that yet. We'll worry about that a little bit later once we've met the team and got an idea of what we're letting ourselves in for. So, um, what's all this? Board welcoming me. I've got a two-year contract. Excellent stuff. I've got assigned players for the first team. And I guess the first thing to do is go and have this meeting with Jose. Hello, Jose. I'll let, I want to have a little bit of a private chat with Jose, so I'll be back with you guys in a minute. Right, chat with Jose complete. Um, in positive news, uh, my assistant manager is Jesus. So hopefully he'll he'll have some uh, have some fresh ideas for me to help me turn this team around. Um, injury update, not a massive issue. There's a guy called Ross who's here. Ross McCrory, 31-year-old Scottish international centre-back. Who's he then? Who's he in real life? Plays for Rangers. Pre then went to Juventus. Now at Sevilla. I mean, he seems like a decent calibre of player. We've got... And Linda... I mean, this... And, he's probably old, though. 35 years old. I see we've got an ageing team. I'm noticing that straight away. Player's currently unhappy. This guy's unhappy. What are you unhappy about? Um, you're 20 years old. You look like you're the best. Oh, look at all... You're unhappy because you want to go and play for one of them, I imagine. You're quite good. We've got good players. Or oh, we've, we've found two so far. Social feed, yeah, we don't need to worry about Germany anymore. Captain, um, yes, Ross, mainly because you speak English, you can you can be my captain. So this is the history of Sevilla. Previously won La Liga once, Europa League five times. I mean, I've got previous with the Europa League, so perhaps that's something we need to... Uh, we need to focus in on them. Perhaps this is where I can win my first trophy. Go and win a go and win a Europa League. We've got decent youth facilities, decent training facilities, and a team report. So it looks like we're half decent at playing a four two three one. That's handy. That's what I'm used to playing. And um, we've got good defensive midfielders, right wing, left wing. Good job this isn't past Kev. We've got good scouts. In fact, let's have a look at the staff. We've got we've got very good scouts. Excellent. But the coaching team leaves a lot to be desired. So that needs some work. Um, one of the goalkeepers are strong communicators. I mean, that's what goalkeeping is all about. Ross McCrory is good. Or McCrory, McCrory. What are we bad at? We're, we're doing rubbish. What are we bad at? Um, we've got no money and we're overspending. Uh, yeah, I guess that is what we're bad at. We're not very accurate at shooting. We're just massively underperforming. This feels like a team where you should be able to fairly quickly G them back up. Uh, Victor Lindelof, I mean, he's an old man. Is he actually any good anymore? Are we going to do better than him? I'm not going to offer him a contract immediately. We'll have a look at that shortly. Jack Butland's knocking around here as well. A 36-year-old Jack Butland in the reserves. Uh, what's with all the players coming from Juventus and arriving with us? Are they our parent club or something? Is this just to rub it in that I didn't get the Juventus job? Right, let's have a look at the squad. See what we've got to play with here. Can we have a look at the squad? Why is the Lelujo view not working properly available on the Steam Workshop? Just search for Lelujo view. It's not all fitting on the screen, which is handy. So, our best players. Best player is Tony Moreno, who's a defensive midfield player, who can't really play in central midfield. So we've got to play a system that has a defensive midfielder in because he's the best player at the club. He's a deep line playmaker. But this is this means I've got to do something different to what I normally do unless we do a Mori with him and just force him into midfield. What are you? Second best player. Antonio Zazana is, a, is an attacking midfield. Right, OK. So now I'm thinking Diamond, but we've already learned from the team report that the two best players at the club, or two of the best players at the club are wingers. We've got another player who's a... Defensive midfielder. This is just an unbalanced squad. Another attacking midfielder. You're a winger. All we've got is midfield players. Defender, goalkeeper, a winger on the other side. So we've got to play like a six-man midfield. We've got. Have we got a striker? Do we have any strikers? I'm no. I'm already seeing where the issue might be. He's the best striker at the club. Fabio Valentini. And he scored twice this season. Okay. This is... What type of striker is he? Where's he gone? Valentini. You're a complete forward. I mean, that's handy. 
looking at that, and I know I'm not much of a stats man, but you always want the love heart shape for a striker. And he looks like he's got all the right stuff in all the right areas. Why has he only scored twice this season? I don't understand. Who's been playing up front? If we go on the schedule, who played up front in the last game? Where are we? Right. Garcia played up front. But he is a winger. We already talked about that. So we've played with two defensive midfielders. I guess that that actually makes sense based on based on the selection of players we've just looked at. So maybe we can take the system that we're used to, or I'm used to, our Gagan press system, drop the centre midfielders back a little bit. Are we going to force square pegs into round holes? Or are we going to get them playing how they're used to playing? It looks like this is what they always do. A 4-2-3-1. I don't like this. I'm not going to do that. If we give them my Gagan press, which is... Very similar to the one that comes with the game as a preset. Um, if we get them doing that, can they do it? That's where we're going to have the problem. We've got no midfield. But then if we drop those two back... Hmm. Mm hmm. I need to have a ponder. I do feel like I just want to force them into doing this. And if they're not any good at it, we'll just sell them and replace them. That's what I'm thinking. Let me have a little play. And then we'll do our first game of the season. We'll do the Espanyol game. We'll get an idea of how rubbish we are. I'll, I'll sort a team out. And then we're going to we're gonna pick a team and play a match. And get an idea of just what we're letting ourselves in for. Well, this, this could either be a very short-lived stay in Spain. Or I could be a tactical genius. Uh, Money-wise, it's a disaster. We've got to sell some players. We can't even renew contracts. So... It's going to be an interesting January. The transfer window's just opened, but we are playing Espanyol in our first game in La Liga. And this is what we're going with. Um, a 4-2-3-1 with the two defensive midfielders because I don't have anyone who can play a normal central midfield and I don't want two players out of position. Whether it's in a 4-2-3-1 or a 4-3-3, I'm going to have players out of position here. So I've played around with instructions. Both these guys want to be deep-line playmakers on defend, which I'm not going to let them do. Um, I, I've never used a Segundo Volante, but reading reading about how it works, it's similar to a deep line playmaker, but more defensive and best suited to being paired with an anchor man. So I've paired it with an anchor man. I've got him on an attacking instruction so he gets a bit further forward. And I've got my central attacking midfielder on a support instruction so he drops back a bit. It does leave us with a gap here, apparently. But... I have no idea. This could be a complete disaster. It's based on the 4-2-3-1 control position system we used with Fulham. So we've moved away from Gagan Press. We've left Germany. We can't do Gagan Press anymore. Um, plus, no, none of this like, know how to do it. So we're trying to do something as close to what they might be used to doing as possible. And then we'll see where the where the issues are. We do have some very good players. This front four in particular looks very good. These two should be solid. The back four should be solid. My issue is, let's see what he wants to be def be defensive then. My issue is we've just got a big gaping hole here and we could be handing control of the midfield to our opposition. We're going to really need our wing backs to push on. We're going to need Marine Moreno to push into this position as well. I'm going to need Zazana to, to move around a bit. But this is what we're going with. I have no idea if it's going to be any good, uh, but we do need it to be good fairly quickly because... The team is struggling. It's had some horrible form in the first half of this season. And we need to turn that around. Worryingly, I've just seen how low some of these attendances are. Luckily, they're the away ones, I think. I thought we'd move to a tiny team. That would have been a disaster. So, I don't know who these players are yet. We'll get to know them together. Um, but this is this is the team. For the first time at Sevilla, we've got Angulo in goal. A back four of Centelles, McCrory, Lindelof and Montiel with... I can't even read his name. It's so small. Matias Fernandez and Moreno as our midfield, as our defensive midfielders. Garcia, Zazana and Roba as our attacking midfielders, and then Valentini up front. Let's let's get into the game and see if we're any good. We are trying to play a positive style of football. We're doing our, our attack, not not attacking, whatever it's called now. Is it is it positive? It might be called positive on FM nineteen. Um, right, I think we need an assertive team talk. 
They've lost three of their last five games. I expect us to pile on the misery today. Yeah, I do. Didn't have any impact at all. Probably because I'm talking a mixture of English and German and they're all sat there listening in Spanish and there's probably some communication issues. If you remember, when I f I've talked about this with players before as well, but when I first arrived in Germany, results were a little bit hard to come by initially until I became fluent in German and it was a combination of becoming fluent in German and switching to the Gagan press. We did them both at the same time and suddenly came, became title challengers from relegation threat and team without really changing the personnel massively. So I am a little bit worried that as I can't speak Spanish, it's going to be an issue straight away. But Rober has put us 1-0 up after eight minutes. I don't know anything about him other than the fact that it's his fourth goal of the season and we've played very well so far. I know there's only eight minutes on the clock, but we've had over three quarters of the possession for those eight minutes. And Garcia, who we've already identified as the best player at the club, who came to me in midweek and said he was frustrated about a lack of first team opportunities. I don't know why the previous manager wasn't playing him. I'm kind of thinking build the attack around him. He's that good. And he made the goal and we've... Uh, managed to see off our first bit of defending as well but talk about control possession goodness me if we control possession in the first 20 minutes or so of this game if we can do that I mean I know we're not likely to do that against the big four five six teams in the division but if we can do this more often than not in these home games against the lesser teams then we should at least be safe from relegation. The board are looking, the board are looking for a mid-table finish this season. It's a twenty, a twenty-team league. Oh, for goodness' sake, that's crept in, crept in from miles out. Um, they're looking for a mid-table finish, so I guess that means anything from thirteenth upwards. I guess because top half is different. Oh, it's a big deflection as well. Big deflection and it still only just squeezes past the goalkeeper. I do feel a little bit hard done by there because looking at the stats, we've controlled that first half and they've had a deflected shot that's ended up going into our bottom corner just before half time. Uh, is that how things are going to be? We've got to get rid of the bad luck, have we? Right, team talk. Passionate. Um, we've been the better team. Just keep doing what you're doing and you'll be fine. Again, they don't care. This team don't care about what I've got to say to them, and I find that quite troubling. Right, let's let's do it again. We played well in the first half. Let's do the same again and see if we can create some chances. Azana not playing particularly well. I don't really know what we've got on the bench to come on and change this game up. All I know is we don't really have any central midfielders. Um, Espanyol now playing with a higher tempo. Who cares? We're still going to control possession. Right. Valent... We've got the same thing we have with home, where the players have all come out of order. Valentini, who have we got who can come on as a striker? I mean, is he really the best option? Freideck is an attacking mid... I mean, he's a good shadow striker. Competent centre-forward. One of the better players at the club. Right. What do I do here, then? Can you play in... Cent I'm looking at him all thinking, can you play in central midfield? Can you play in central midfield? Um, I'm going to bring Frydeck on for him. And we still need someone for Valentini. Fernandez, are you any good? Jose Felix Fernandez, you are a striker. You are pressing forward. You're a young kid. But you are scoring well for our youngsters. Zazana is apparently the next best striker at the club. Can you play up front? I've just taken him off. So, you know what? Give the kid a go. See if he's any good. Be a, be a pressing forward. In fact, be a pressing forward on support. You go be the shadow striker. I know that's going to leave a big gap behind him, potentially. In fact, if you want to do it on defend, I just want him to run around and create spaces for this guy behind him. I, I know there's a danger of them getting on top of each other there. But if we've got someone who's going to score goals coming from attacking midfield, let's just send the youngster on to be a nuisance. He's probably not going to be a goal-scoring threat, but have him run around a bit, just get in the way, create spaces for the shadow striker behind him. Maybe. Again, tactical thinking. It's not becoming of me. How good are Espanyol? Are they a team we should be beating? They're a team who are roughly where we want to be. We've not played particularly well in this first game. In fact, that's not fair. We've we've controlled the game nicely. We've done what we set out to do. What we haven't done is create much in the way of chances. Pozo is another one who's a good player. We've got a lot of good attacking players. 
It's just trying to get them all onto the pitch at the same time, which is going to be the problem. Because none of them want to play in central midfield. <laughs> Should we stick him up here? Roba, what can you be? You're a... Garcia can play as a striker. So hold on, let's shuffle around again. And now you can get your dream and just do that and just sit there being a defender. This seems so dumb. Can you play further back? No. We're almost drifting towards a wide diamond, maybe. And then you can do that. We're just going to have to play there and like it. And you can do that. <laughs> what is this? What has this become? You're going to have to be more defensive. And you... You're the odd one out. You're just going to have to play there. Let's see what happens here. We haven't done a shout yet. Should we show some passion? Introduce the good people of Spain to 10 minutes of passion. And uh, we don't want to concede a late goal. It would be a shame, having started the game so well, to throw it all away with tactical tinkering. We desperately need some central midfield players. Urgently. Someone get Hussein Purbay on the phone. I've got a task for him. Not that we can offer him any money at all, because we've got none. Freideck plays it all the way over to Pozo. We've got a man on the overlap here on the right-hand side. We chose not to use him. We've got 20 seconds left. Can we grab a late winner? We could really use one. Lindelof across to McCrory. We've got 10, second left. 10 seconds left now. And it's Robert who doesn't... I mean, yes, you're playing out of position, but you don't just let it hit you in the face and then not chase after it. That's nothing. To, he's got man of the match, inexplicably. He scored the goal, but clearly he got a soul con when I moved him out of position. Right, let's... Uh, yeah, unlucky. We could we could have won that if I'd have known what our best team was before we went into it. Alas, I don't yet. And now we've got a game... A couple, three, three games that could be troublesome. But a nice little unbeaten run building which is nice. Um, I think I'm going to be I'm going to play out the January transfer window offline and then we'll be back tomorrow with Granada and Levante. Partly because they're two games I'd like to think we should be able to win and partly because we'll know if we've been able to do anything in the transfer market in that time. There are a number of our players who are wanted by other clubs. If I can move the right players on to allow me to bring in a couple of players that I need, that would be handy. Like Roba, for example. He's 29 years old. We've got Pozo, who is a perfectly good player who can go out there and play on that side, who's better than him, in fact. If we could get 30 million for this guy, get his wages off the books, we could then potentially bring in a couple of central midfielders and get a little bit closer to a system that works for me. That's got to be the plan. Um, if you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.